All right, so yesterday we did a little Euclid's algorithm. We didn't really beat it to death. I'm going to hit it a little bit more today because it is useful for one thing, and that is for inverses of modular arithmetic. So here's the game. What is the GCD of these two guys? Now, clearly going in, we already know the answer is 4. It's not very hard. Now, 44 divided by 36. In other words, 36 goes into it one time. leaves your remainder of 8. 36 divided by 8, which is your previous remainder, goes in 4 times with a remainder of... 4. 8 uh, is divided by 4, goes in 2 times, it comes out 0. That is, it goes in evenly. Okay, This last guy is your greatest common uh, divisor. That's great. That's it. That's all there is to it. So then, the question then becomes, well, what if they were relatively prime? Okay, What if you had 17 and 22? Not both prime numbers, but prime relative to one another. Then I don't know. 22 minus 17 times 1 is 5. 17 goes into 5, 5 goes into 17 3 times with the remainder of 2. 5 divided by 2 gives you a 1. Now what this is saying to me is this, is that 5 and 1, or I'm sorry, 5 and 2, what do they have in common? 1. Wait a minute, is that true that 17 and 5 also have 1 in common? That's right. Is 22 and 17 also have 1 in common? That's right. If I went one step further, of course, it would equal 0. But here's the question. Okay, well, question. Here's the statement that, that's also made. Is that A times S plus N, uh, B times T equal 1, they are relatively, relatively prime. So in other words, when you get to this step, you know they're relatively prime. Of course, you could go a step further and say that phi, uh, 2 rather minus uh, 1 times 2 is equal to 0. Okay, that's great. But what does that mean? This guy right here is my least common, or my greatest common divisor. And so that's the same thing. It's just saying this. This is a big deal. It is a big deal. So when you're going to find the inverses modulo n, okay, we need to start off with a integers a, integer a and n, and they must be relatively prime. So if uh, the GCD of a and n is 1, is they're relatively prime, then there exists an integer. There exists an integer s such that uh, a and t, I'm sorry, s and t, such that uh, a s plus n t is equal to 1. Okay? Now you're like, why would I care about the j? Well, you watch, you'll see. So in other words, a s would be equal to 1 minus n t. Now, if I take the modular arithmetic of this thing, check it out. If I did mod n, of course, you did both sides, of course. Okay, but what I would say is this. I would say that as is congruent to, now it's going to be 1 mod n minus t times n mod n. But listen, this is just saying I'm going around the clock. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, n minus 1, right? There's n numbers in this clock. I'm going to go around it t times backwards and end it back at 0. So this piece right here goes away. So what this says to me is that as is congruent to 1 in mod n. Okay? And so what does that tell me? What that tells me is this, is that... Uh, um, uh, so that's going to be helpful to me in that when I get this done, that s value is going to be my inverse modulo n. Okay, so let's try one, shall we? Okay, so let's pick a couple numbers here. Let's do mod 7. So that's my n. And let's choose uh, 59. So 59 and 7, of course, are relatively prime. We know that's going in. So 59 minus 7 times 8 gives me a remainder of 3. Right? Make sense? So then 7 divided by 3 gives you a 1. They are relatively prime. And that's that's nice. Okay, so what I'm saying by that is this. I'm saying if you start off with 7 minus 3, what is 3? 3 is this beast, yes? So 
So minus three times two is equal to one. If I look at this problem here, I mean, I've got a one seven here, I've got a minus a 59, and then I'm gonna have plus eight sevens, right? Oh, shoot. And everything inside is times by two, so I got a two there, and this is actually a 16. Are you with me? Is equal to one. How many sevens do I have? It looks like I have uh, 17 sevens, and I have two 59s. Does that make sense? Okay. So then, okay, well, so what does that mean to me? Okay, I'll keep, keep watching, we'll get there. Now, what I'm saying is this, is that uh, because 17 times seven, this is a seven clock. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? I'm gonna go around it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice, okay? So when I do this problem here, that's, that's cool. I went around seven times, that's great. Um, the question then is, well, huh? That's interesting. So you're telling me then, Jay, that negative, um, so, so remember our function was 59, yes? That means that negative two, negative two is our inverse in mod, in mod seven. Now someone might say to you, well wait, what is negative two in mod seven? Well, one, two, oops. So it looks like five should be our inverse mod Seven. Okay, and uh, yeah, that, that's just it. So let me pause this real quick, and that's that's right. So let's do another one. It's gonna be a big deal coming up. Uh, let's say I have um, 312. I want to do mod is congruent to something mod um, mod 13 because I guess why not again they have to be relatively primed to one another so 312 minus 13 times something so calculator oh shoot it goes in 24 well that's not bueno <laughs> Let's try 11 shall we what are the odds that you pick a goofy random old number and it goes in perfect? It's pretty dumb. Uh, is this nice? Yes, minus two times 11 gives me eight, right? Oops, nine. Three twelve divided by eleven is this, yes? The heck did I do before? I don't have any idea what I did before. Minus twenty eight times eleven is four. Okay, whatever. I don't know. Wasn't paying attention, so it was twenty eight equals four. Man, that's embarrassing. Hey, what is eleven? Uh Divided by four, well, it goes in twice with the remainder of three. Hey, four, there's a remainder of one. What does that say? It says that those guys are relatively primed to one another. So I'm gonna take four uh, minus three times one, okay? So let's do this, let's work backwards here. So four minus three, so what is three? Three is this guy. Okay, equals one, of course. And then what is four? Well, four is technically 312 minus 11 times 28, right? And then you're like, okay, well, that's nice. And then so let's keep going here. So that's 312 minus 11 times 28 minus, and then it's 11 minus four, which is four is this guy. 312 minus 11 times 28 equals 1. So in other words, it's I've got 312 and I've got negative, 11, negative 28 11s. And then if I subtract, I get another negative 11. And I'm going to get a plus 
two 312s. And then I'm going to get a minus, a minus, a minus, so minus 22. times, um, oh shoot, minus, try it again, Jay. Remember, it's the 11s that you're keeping track of. So it's two times, times 28, so minus 56, 11s. And so how many 312s I have? I have one, two, three, 312s. Then I'm gonna have negative 28, negative 29, negative, 85 I think 11s okay remember this just says I'm going to go around the clock 85 times so the answer I have is 3 boom that's my inverse okay now and there's your answer now why do we jump through all these hoops? Because we look at the little RSA ciphers. So if you're going to encode something, okay, to encode a letter, I'm going to go C equals M to the E mod P Q. Okay, here are some things. You need to choose two numbers that are prime numbers. So in your case, this book decides they're going to use P and Q as 5 and 11. Okay. So this is going to end up being mod 55 here in a minute. That's fine. E is a number that is relatively prime to P minus 1 and Q minus 1. Well, this is 40 in this particular case. There are a variety of numbers that are relatively prime to that. Be, in my, be, in, be aware that re, what, whatever it is you do, E is an exponent, so for goodness sakes, don't choose the biggest one. I mean, literally, you could choose 39. You can choose 51 as far as that goes, or 41, I guess, as far as that goes, too. All it says is it must be relatively prime. Why on earth would you do that? The first number that comes to my mind that's relatively prime to 40 is 3. So that's why your book, if you're playing along with this example at home, you get this. So you're like, you want to convert J's name to this. What I will do is take my, my letter, which is, is 10, so 10 to the third power mod 55 and I made an Excel page of that so I went through and numbered there they are there's all the letters of the alphabet here's the numbers that go with them and here's my formula so I did the mod of and be careful when you do this because I messed this up earlier I should not have locked in the dollar signs on the B1 okay and but what you'll see is is that one and two come out to be the, exactly the same, okay? Because you're taking um, ten to the first power and uh, well, you're taking I'm sorry, you're taking a one to the first power and getting one. What is one in mod fifty five? That's cool, and then so on and so on and so on. So that's the game here, um, and, and down the line you go with these guys, okay? So. Uh, if you look at it again, it's this, it is that, to the e power, mod that. Okay, so 1 to the third power is 1, duh, 1 is anything, 1 is, its, 1 is itself there, okay? 2 to the third power, mod 55, and so on, and so on, and so on. Oh, to the second power. Um, so, the, oops. Call that guy up. There it is. There's my problem. This should have been a, this should have been a, a B2. I think I see my problem now, friends. There we go. And so paste that down. There we go. Mucho better. Now, so let's get rid of this. So if you're coding my name, you would just come in here and you go, J is a 10, and A is a 1, and Y is a 5. And so 1015 would be my name in this RSA. Um, way of doing things, okay, and that's great, okay, but here is a better way to do it, okay, or here is a way to need to undo it, so remember mine is, what did I say, 10, 1, 5, that's great, Jay, so I sent this, it came across, how do I decipher that, so if I, this is for encrypting, for deciphering, it becomes M equals, obviously, 
c to some power d mod pq. Okay? And so when you do this, you're like, well, well, I need to find out what D is. You're right. You do need to find out what D is. So to do that, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to, D is, is the inverse modulo we just found. Okay? It's the inverse modulo we just found. Inverse modulo between who and who? You're saying, that's a good call. It's the inverse modulo between E, right, and uh, um, yeah. So it's the inverse modulo that we need to have there to pull this off. So remember, what is E? E is what it is um, relatively prime to who? To this guy right here. And so when we do that. Um, so what we're saying is we need to have an uh, we need to have the inverse of e modulo is what we're looking for p minus one q minus one so in this case it's going to be three and forty okay so to do this on this problem and this is why I want to keep going with it here so you can see how this works out because again you need to be able to if you if you're not being able to decode something then the code is worthless so if I did this I have forty and 3, 3 goes into 40 13 times with the remainder of 1. Oh, well, that's hot. So what is your inverse here? Your inverse here is then what? It is 13. Okay? And uh, so that's how that should play out. Okay? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's how it should play out there. And that should be my inverse modulo there, right? And uh, so just be aware of that going in. Um, Okay, I wasn't wrong, I just was have to pay attention. Remember, it's 40 minus 13 times 3. So this negative 13 is the answer that I seek. Now remember, this is on a 40 clock. So 0, 1, 2, 3, da, 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 39, right? Negative 13 puts me over here at 27. That's the big key. That's your D right there, okay? So that's a big deal. Now, remember, the function says, and I quote up here somewhere, it says that... Um, m is equal to c to the d mod 55. So I'm going to have m is equal to 10 to the 17 mod 55. Let's see if that's true. So equals 10 to the 17 10 to the and I'm going to do it over here somewhere 17, and then I'm going to do mod around that guy just for a good time. Mod. Mod, uh, what did I say? Oh, yeah, that guy right there. And I'm going to go ahead and hold that in dollar signs nice and I'm gonna get rid of this 10 right here real quick and I'm gonna do click on that guy yes and then this guy here needs to be um, what is this 27 wait what just happened 10, 10, 27. no 10 to the, so what did I say 17 or did I say 27 Oh, shoot. What did I say? Oh, 27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, oh, Betsy won't do it for me. No, she won't. Uh, so is there a reason why I won't do it? Yeah, it's too big a number. 
all right so how do how can I go about that well there's another way to do that so if the person were to do this equals 10 to the Okay. One can see that every time you do this, you're going to get a 10 or a 45, a 10 or a 45, a 10 or a 45, a 10 or a 45. Are you with me? So, so then the question would be, all right, so, you know, where, where does that put me on this deal here? Okay. And uh, I'm messing something. Okay. So if you look at that, so this is to the first power, second power, third power, fourth power, fifth power, sixth power, seventh power, and so on, right? I'm raising mine to the 27th power. The 27th power is going to give me what? Well, it's going to be one of the odd ones. That is a remainder of 10. Hence, this is 10. So even though the Betsy won't do it for me, I can kind of get around it. And the next one's going to be, if I drag this baby sideways, if you do that, you're like, is that the right numbers? Am I calling it right? No, because this needs to be locked in. Now it'll work. So when I drag this sideways, ah, what are you doing? Oh, moron. There we go, but it works now. Idiot. Okay, so bear in mind, we're going to have problems again. So on this guy right here, what do we have? Well, we have, so it's, um, when I do this, it's going to be 1 to the 27th power, which of course is 1. What is 1 mod 55? What's well, 1 again? So not shocked by that at all. So we have 1. Okay, so that's J, A. And then what is Y? So it's going to be 5 to the 27th power. 5 to the 27th power. Well, let's do this. So equals. Oh, wait. No, back up. So here I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, well, it's not 5 to the first power. It's going to be 5 to the, or not 10 to the first power. It's 5 to the first power. And then paste it down. That's cool. Notice it's going to go 5, 10, 15. 5, 25, 15, 20, 45, 5. And it repeats itself, yes, over and over and over again, right? So we're looking for the 27th one of them. Now, um, I will just continue this process down. Somewhere down here it says, oh, screw you, I'm not going to do it. But we can figure it out. So it's 20, this should be 45, 5, 25, Oops, 25, 15, 20, 45, and 20. For God's sake, what did you say? 27th power. Lay down the 27th power. So, oh, for Pete's sakes. Okay, so let's keep the process going. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy from here down to here. Control C. Control V. Oh, fart. Control undo. Paste values only. Are you with me? And then I'm going to paste values only again. Why am I doing that? Because that's the order that keeps repeating itself. Does that make sense? So the 27th power is going to give me a 25. What is 25? 25 is Y, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. Okay. Will I make you do a bunch of these by hand? No, nah, if I just do one or two just for a good time. Okay. Uh, let's do another one that's fairly straightforward. I'm going to do pig, for instance. Pig. Okay. Now remember, when I'm encrypting this, I need to choose a P and, two P, a P and a Q that are prime. So P I'm going to choose to be 3. Q I'm going to choose to be 7. So P, Q is 21. Also, this is going to be 2 times 6 is 12. I need to choose an E. The, um, I need to choose an E that is relatively prime to 12. So 2, no, 3, no, 4, no, 5, 5. I'm going to choose E to be equal to 5. Okay, but that's all there is to this. So I'm going to do C is equal to M to the E mod PQ. Okay, so in our case, C is going to be equal to whatever to the 5 mod 21. Okay, so back over here to my Excel, what is P? P is 16, okay? 
And so when I do that problem here, I'm going to retweak these because as I said, I went in and fixed them. And so we said P was 3, I believe. And I said this was 7. That's cool. And I said my E was 5. So you see it's relatively prime. If I've done this correctly now, look what's happening. Are we calling the right numbers? So it's it's that to the E mod PQ. Yeah, that ought to work just fine. Nice. So when I do this problem, okay, P then is going to be a 4. I is a 18, 4, 18, and 7. 4, 18, 7. I tell my friends what 3 and 7 and this are, or I'll tell them what P and Q are, or P and E rather are, and now we're off to the races. Okay? Uh, P, sorry, PQ. There you go. Now, now if I want to decrypt this on the other end, she's going to use this formula, C to the D mod. 21. That's cool. All I have to do then is find out what this value is. Okay, what value? Well, remember, 21 and 5 is what I'm finding the inverses of, or 12 rather, and 5. So 12 and 5, right? I want to figure out what I can rewrite them as, all right? So, um, so 12 is 5 times 2, which is 2. 5 minus, and then it's 2 times 2 again, equal 1. That's great. Therefore, my mod, um, my inverse mod, or also let's back this up a little ways. Because this, because this right here, because that can be written as equaling 1, that means that, that uh, I can rewrite this problem as 5 times, or 5 plus rather, 2 times what 2 is. Okay, and so when I do that, I get 5 plus 2 twelves minus 10 2, oh darn it. We're counting fives, remember, we're counting fives, be careful. We're counting fives. So it's going to be minus 4 fives equal 1. So I do this problem, I'm going to have 2 twelves uh, minus 3 fives equal 1. All right. So five minus oh, for God's sake, it's minus two, you idiot. So it's going to be negative, there you go. This should be positive. So that should be five fives. So that's 25 minus 24. Yay, okay, great, fabulous. Holy mackerel. So what we're saying is we're doing, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we're doing the inverse modulo of this PQ routine, yes? So this just means we were around the 12 o'clock hour, we went around it backwards, right? We went around it backwards, and we said, okay, so it's, you know, we're back to zero again, okay? And so then, five is my inverse mod number right there, that five. Now, they're both the same five, but remember, we start off with a five, so it's whatever's in front of that guy, so positive five, that's my, that's my D. So in this case, it's simply going to be C to the D, C to the five, rather, mod 21. So let's see if that works. So we're going to have 4 to the 5. Oh, by the way, the compute, the calculators will do mods too, just for a good time. Uh, so I got to think about where to find it on this calculator. It's under math. Uh, actually, let's go into the stupid calculator out of the, the catalog. Mod. There we go. So I used to go mod, and then um, I'm going to go 4 to the 5, comma, 21. And I get 16. And then I'm going to do it again. And uh, so this time it is 18 to the 5, 
is 9. And that one I do know is, is I. And then um, 7 to the 5, 7. So, yeah, G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. Cool. And there it is. So that's the decrypted code. Uh, if you want to know about a TI-84, TI-84 looks like, or 83, they're very similar. On this guy, if you go to, you can do also do catalog. So if you do second zero, and then you should be able to do on this one the same way, wherever M is, there's M. So there's, um, Oh, it doesn't do mods. Oh, well, sorry, I thought I did. I lied to you. I could have sworn it did. Oh, well, not not to worry. You can use Excel for that. It's not the end of the world. Actually, I kind of like Excel better. Anyway, so there's some RSA encrypting. They're kind of fun to work with. That's nice. Uh, 6.1 is the only other thing I wanted to talk about today. 6.1 is pretty straightforward. In fact, we've talked a lot about it already. Just some set theory notations. For instance, yesterday... Um, X and Y, um, I'm sorry, if I do this, if I say that, listen, if I say that A is equal to B, and the way for A to equal B is if A is a subset of B, that is everything in A is in B, and everything that is in B is in A. So if those are true, then you've got A and B. That's every element of the one has to be inside the other one. We've talked about the union of sets, A and B, and B, of course, is a union B. That is everybody that's in both sets. It's pretty straightforward. We talked about the intersection. So here's A, here's B. It's everybody in those sets. Okay? The intersection, they have to both be true. So we've talked about this quite a bit. This is A and B. That would be this little bit in there. That's nice. Um... The difference of B minus A, you can write as a relative complement. Um, think about that. If you did B minus A, um, here is A, here is B. B minus A is this piece with the chunk taken out of it, right? It just takes whatever's in B minus whatever's in A. And that's where you'd have that guy. Um, the complement is whatever's not in A, right? So if you did A... Some books, by the way, will do A complement. Some books will do A with a bar on top. There's other variety of ways to write. Your book uses the A sub, the A with the C up there like that. It just means this. If this is A, and this is everybody else, including B, including C, for instance, what would be shaded in is everything but A. Everything but A is what we're interested in. Okay, so it's rain, not rain. Okay, we've talked about those quite a bit. They're not very hard to do. Um, also, in the text, they talk about um, different ways of writing uh, set notations, uh, set builder notation. You've seen this before. I want a less than x, less than or equal to b, whatever. Of course, you can write that as a, b, brackets. Uh, you can write it any number of ways. Also, you can write a and B such um, such that oops where am I at such that uh, is equal to X element of the reals such that uh, A is less than X is less than or equal to B whatever you get the picture you've seen all that before there's nothing special or fancy by that set builder notation that's literally the fact that you're making a set for it. Remember that you cannot get to infinity, so for God's sakes, do not include infinity. Do not use a bracket on infinity. Brackets, of course, mean equal to. Parentheses mean not equal to. Okay? Um, pretty easy to do. If I do this terminology, this is a pretty easy deal here. This just means you take the union of all the sets. Right? That's, just, that's all it means. Take the union of all of the sets up to n, whatever there are there, right? If there were an infinite number of sets, of course, this could be infinity. You just add all of them up. That's fine. Um, you can do the intersection also, the same thing. The intersection of all the sets. And see where they all intersect each other right there. Um, 
it's pretty straightforward. Just kind of get an idea for that situation you can add up a bunch of sets that's just a nice easy way of saying it we talked yesterday about disjoint sets yeah, in probability we call that mutually exclusive but a and b are disjoint if the intersection is equal to the null set okay there's no overlap between them okay um so that's a true statement. Now you can have mutually disjoint, okay? Very similar to mutually or um, relatively prime. It's a very similar situation. Um, there are times when this part of a set does not interact with this part of a set, okay? And so, for instance, um, yeah, as long as I and J are not the same, okay? But you can just have different pieces of them, okay? So sets A1, 2, and 3, and 4 are mutually disjoint. That doesn't mean all the A's or whatever. It just means these two have no intersection. So basically the same problem as the first one, except that you could have a whole bunch of these different pieces and parts. Again, very similar to the day when we talked about partitioning this set into some A1s, A2s, A3s, A4, A5s. That's great. It's possible that A6 is here, yes. But look, A1 and A2 are mutually disjoint. There's no overlap between them. Okay. Um, so, again, this right here. If I get rid of that one. For the love of Pete, go away. No one likes you. There you go. Nice. So notice that you notice here that the union of all the sets A I's from I goes from one to five is equal to just A, the whole shebang, right? This just means this is a partition. You just partition the whole thing. Okay? Uh, they are mutually disjoint, there's no overlap, just add them all together and you're done. We've already talked about the power sets, that's not hard. So a lot again, a lot of six three we've talked about. If this is a set A, one, two, three. The power set of A is simply equal to 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, it's power set. Okay. Um, yeah, yep, 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 yep. That's pretty straightforward. Cartesian product of them when you just make n tuples of them so for instance um, if you have if you have a set that looks like this if this is a is one two three and you've got b is um, two four six or whatever then a cross b like this the cartesian product of them is what that's called would just be you do one two well you do one two one four one six Two 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 four two six three two three four three six done okay not very hard to do of course if you had three sets right then you'd all then you would, instead of being um, uh, um, ordered pairs you'd have ordered triplets or whatever or you, then you'd say you'd have n tuples right. So it's not very hard to do. It's pretty easy, as in fact, matter of fact. Um, if you think about it, uh, you know that is a situation where you'd have one of these guys. Something like you have databases would work the same way. You'd pick something from here and something from here and match them up, and there'd be all these different different ways of doing it. Okay. Um, again, that's what set builder notation is all about. That's what these different things are. We will be doing talking about tomorrow, uh, doing some examples from six one in class and talking about some stuff from 6-2 as well as reviewing for the exam. So have a great day.